Hi, welcome to this latest episode of CIO Leadership Live. I'm David Binning, Associate Editor with CIO Australia. Joining me for this episode is Peter Ratcliffe, who's Head of Technology with iconic Australian fashion, in particular Boots brand, Peter Ratcliffe. Peter, welcome to CIO Leadership Live. Thank you, David. Wonderful to have you on the show. Now, I understand that, uh, so you, jo- you joined uh, RM Williams in a, in a full-time capacity in 2021, and before that you'd been working in a, as a, in a sort of consultancy capacity on a fairly, on a fairly b- bold and ambitious uh, digital transformation project. You're now kind of, you know, a, a key uh, person at RM Williams uh, driving this with your team. One of the things that I wanted to get into, into with you uh, first up is, uh, and this is what I found fascinating when we spoke about this recently, is is what you and your team have been able to achieve thus far and, of course, what we're potentially going to be looking at down the track in terms of customer experience. It's a term that's bandied about a lot in um, in the tech industry and marketing as well. Um, but just to talk, talk me through like what, what that customer experience project kind of looks like at the moment and, uh, and what you've been able to achieve thus far. Yeah, sure, David. Look, um, we had a lot of disparate systems across the business. The customer details were uh, across many of these systems. And, and basically, we, we wanted to turn this around and cater for the customer of today and tomorrow in giving them full omni-channel capabilities, giving us a 360-degree view of the customer across all channels, as well as servicing that customer better and communicating with the customer better. You know, we we had retail systems, we had online systems, we had very archaic service systems that people would just record emails when customers would ring up for repairs or, you know, where's my order? And so everything was disjointed. And, and, and to really succeed in this retail of today and tomorrow, we had to make that big, bold choice of bringing everything together to give us that 360 view of the customer. Yeah, and I mean, RM Williams is a brand that's been around, um, revealing that I've not done my homework perfectly, but I'm pretty sure the company's over 100 years old. Is that right? No, we, we, we had close. our 90th birthday last year. Right, okay, getting close. Yeah. So, I mean, was you, you mentioned, you know, you sort of touched on legacy systems. Were the, the systems as legacy as one might assume from a company that's getting on, that can see its 100th birthday? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes. 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 all over. We had spreadsheets. We had emails. We had, you know, different yeah. things around the place, and we just had to bring it all together. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you bring it all together? So, what? Well, I mean, how many? You, you, we're talking about. We're talking about at least thirty kind of disparate yeah. systems, aren't we? Yeah. 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 So we had well over thirty disparate systems across the business. We have mm. our central ERP. We had pause and and so on. But uh, we, we, um, we, we came up with the vision of having this 360 view of the customer. We talked to many vendors. Uh, we ended up uh, working with the um, Salesforce team and looking at the Salesforce ecosystem. We were already running an older version of the um, Salesforce Commerce Cloud. So part of that was to upgrade our, our version to their latest version. And we also implemented marketing, Salesforce Marketing Cloud and, and um, Service Cloud. So we then looked at a um, point of sale system that was also had a built-in cartridge into Salesforce. So um, solutioning that through, we could embark on a journey where, you know, if an order is taken online, all of the details go through the point of sale, all of the details come back to service cloud, marketing cloud, we know what customers are bought, what um, when somebody calls our service centre, now every detail of that customer and their orders and any interactions with any of our team are recorded in Service Cloud. So we can actually see that full view. But it's also giving us the foundation of being able to communicate much better with the customer. We were doing old batch and blast emails. Everybody got the same email. But now we have the tech in place where we can actually personalise those journeys so if you bought a particular Comfort Craftsman boot yesterday, we're not going to send you an email to buy that Comfort Craftsman. We're going to actually send you emails about how you should, what else you should buy to wear with those Comfort Craftsmen. 
how you look after your boots, how you polish them, what you need to do in tutorials and so on. So we can actually really make that a personalised journey for the customer. Yeah. Well, um, look, I'm a, I'm a proud owner of, of R. Williams Boots and, um, you know, nobody's under any illusions about what – it's a significant investment. So, um, yes, having instruction as to how to look after them is, would seem to be very valuable. Mm. Um, so what, what do – what do customers experience in R and Williams stores now that perhaps they didn't experience maybe four or five years ago? Yeah, so um, as a customer walks into our stores now, each staff member has an iPhone uh, with our point of sale app, New Store, on it. So each customer can sit down, be measured for their boots, have that R and Williams signature um, service that our team members work with each customer. They can go through the catalogue on the phone. They can go through options. They can build a boot if they want to. They can have the normal boots that we have on, on, on sale. We can see if the inventory is in the store. If it's not in the store, it can be shipped direct from DC to the customer next day. And we're just about to turn on shipping from any other store within the country. So um, if, it's not, if it's available in a store around the corner or the next suburb, we can ship it to you or you can go and click and collect that order. And basically, we've turned it from having one point of sale, a fixed point of sale in store, to having many, many points of sale, depending on the number of team members we have on the floor at the time. Yeah. So we can actually process transactions quicker, serve customers transaction, serve customers quicker, but also give them that service and feeling of comfort and, and luxury, really, when they're sitting mm. down having a really good conversation with our team member. Yeah, and the and the customer ends up, the transaction ends up occurring between the customer and the person that's sort of taking them on the journey. And, and yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's 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 pretty powerful. Now I understand that, um, and some of you mentioned recently that that really impressed me and stood out that R. M. Williams had its best ever Christmas sale yeah. period. Yeah. yeah. So in in the previous Christmas, look, all retailers had um, great sales over Christmas. Mm. We had our best ever. And it was uh, a lot of that was due to the fact of the tech that we did put in. Whereas, as I was explaining, if you had one fixed point of sale, you would have had a line of customers waiting to make that transaction. If we had nine team members in the stores, then those nine team members then turned into nine points of sale. So we were actually producing transactions quicker. Customers could actually purchase quicker and move on. And so... Um, yeah, we had a brilliant Christmas and basically a lot of that was attributed to the new tech that we put in. And from a tech perspective, in my whole career, this is one of the quietest Christmases that we've ever had for the IT service desk. So, oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, of course, you've spent most of your career in retail, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's, that's saying something coming from you. Now, talk me through how you're using artificial intelligence, because um, I, I know that, I know that you've, you, you've made some sort of inroads and that there's probably some exciting um, developments that we're going to be hearing from you over, over this year. But to tell, to, just for me and, uh, and, our, and our, our watchers, um, what's, yeah. what's going on with AI at the moment? We've started to dabble. Uh, you know, from an online perspective, we've got a um, systems uh, a recommendations tool that actually um, will recommend um, product based on what you're searching for in that session, um, not necessarily what other people bought. But if you're looking for Black Comfort Craftsman boots, it'll also show you other black boots. It won't show you jeans. It won't show you shirts. It's basically it knows that you are searching for boots. So it'll give you every opportunity just to find the boots that you want. That can also be extended into uh, email. So if you do abandon browse, we can actually grab what you were looking for and start communicating with you to get you back to that site to make that purchase or encourage you to go to store. We've got our data warehouse team at the moment working on a whole um, um, strategy on AI and um, machine um, learning in, in what it can do for us in, in our data warehouse model. Um, planning, we're looking at art of, um, AI in helping us do proper planning. Uh, so we're, we're trying, we're in, we're, in, you know, we're in that investigation phase like everybody else. We're trying to get in what, what, what works and what doesn't work 
copywriting, Google ads, you know, there's a whole heap of stuff there that is, is, is out there and we just need to investigate and see what will work best for us. And so what, what's some examples of, of the sorts of um, applications and maybe results that you might be looking for? I mean, we're talking about, for instance, um, more sophisticated inventory planning. Is that something that you're kind of yeah. investigating? Because that must yeah. be critical in a, for an organisation like RM Williams. I mean, you, you, your costs of production are not trivial. No, no, yeah. that's right. And we manufacture, um, all of the boots here are manufactured in Australia. So, you know, we're not just offshoring and placing orders with other suppliers. So we're actually manufacturing our own boots on demand as well as made-to-order boots. So um, the planning process is very complex. We've just gone through a process of um, searching for a new planning process for merge planning, um, item planning and so on. So um, we're about to embark on that implementation of the, the foresight planning systems. Um, and in that are AI tools that will help us plan better. So, and they'll be slowly introduced as we um, implement those uh, modules. Mm, mm. But planning, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> anything that helps. You know, we've come from using spreadsheets, so we're actually going to a much more sophisticated model and we'll take advantage of to any tools that will help us perform better and have the right stock at the right time for the customer. Yeah, yeah and, and I also think you need to be Australian to appreciate how unlikely it is that there's ever going to be somebody that picks up a, a, a pair of our William boots and turns them around and sees made in China. It's probably, right. an, it probably ain't going to happen. Yeah. Um, it ain't going to happen. No. Um, and something else that you mentioned recently, I was quite surprised to, to um, so you me you mentioned that you, you're working with RFID and I think I'd, I said to you, well, surely you must have been dabbling in RFID you know, previously or have been doing so for several years. And so I understand that that's actually not the case. So you, you're in the process of, a, of, um, of uh, investing in and deploying RFID in, in ways that had not really been done before at Iron Williams. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, basically they had looked at RFID a few years ago from a stock accuracy, accuracy perspective in store and in the DC. Mm -hmm. Mm. But um, we took it that one step further because we really wanted to start in the manufacturing plant where we want to track the boots going through the, the workshop mm -hmm. so we know where the bottlenecks are in the workshop and, and so on. And we also do a lot of made-to-order boots, and that then brings us back to our um, 360 view of the customer and providing experience for the customer that as you have a made-to-order boot made, as it goes through the uh, workshop, and, and, you know, the, the soles getting put on and the tugs are getting put on and the gussets are being sewn in, we can actually trigger journeys through Salesforce Marketing Cloud to the customer to say, hey, this is this what step your boots are up to. So they can become part of the whole journey uh, of their mates water boots. So we're going to use that in different ways and not only in tracking stock and, and stock accuracy. Yeah, it's interesting. And so, so something that I probably should have mentioned at the top of the program, so you, I mean, you've, you've not been there all that long, but you've almost doubled the tech team, haven't you, to yeah, yeah. from around eight, eight to 15. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's certainly indicative of the um, increased commitment that RM Williams is making to, you know, digital technologies, one would assume. I wanted to ask you also, so what, I mean, talk, talk me through um, just in, in your own words, your relationship with the you know with the senior executive team so it's it's probably a fairly a, a, a fair assumption that you know in years gone by and as we mentioned aaron williams is is heading you know 100, 100 years old is not that far away mm -hmm. um you know we're talking about an organization a very established organization an organization as well that was was for until reasonably recently had sort of been you know you, you were sort of clothing clothing and footwear for you know, regional and farming type people. I mean, it's, the, you know, you, you don't really have, you hadn't really have innovation in your DNA for w whether it's the organisation itself and, and even in the past, you know, the sorts of customers that you had. So how is that sort of changing, you know, the way that the board, the senior executives are, are, are looking at, at digital technologies and interacting with, um, with people like yourself and your team? Yeah, look, um, you know, previous to me joining, um, RM Williams has gone through a number of hands, originally by RM Williams in, himself, creating the brand and going forward. It was sold 
And then it was then brought um, by the Elkaterton Group. And so there's been some change of ownership along the way. Um, now we're actually owned by the Tattering um, Investment Group, which is part of the group owned by Dr. Andrew and Nicola Forrest. Um, they own us 100%. And um, so, so basically, they're a true believer in the brand. It's a, it was obviously, obviously created as an Outback Australian brand, but we also have many different types of customers that, that we talk to, being the Outback um, Australian, then we have the professionals and someone who wear our boots as well. We're quite large overseas and we're expanding overseas more. And we're such an iconic brand that, you know, we now have the backing of, of the Tatarine Group to be the best we can be. So um, they encourage us to innovate and to make the, the brand, the business and the customer happy and, and look to innovate to, to just, uh, they believe in, in it totally. And in fact, our whole, our whole uh, project that we did on the 360 view of the customer was called Project Remington. Now, if you look back years ago, a Remington machine was the old CRM card device where, where basically it held a card, a separate card for every customer detailing what size they were, what they like, what they don't like. So to us, that brand, that thing, that device was we were creating the digital version of that device today. So um, the whole project throughout the business was called Project Remington. And so it brought the old right back into the new. So, right. Um, right. Yeah, that was good. Well, that's interesting to know. Um, so and presumably with so much more um, investment in digital solutions and expanding your uh, data repositories, um, uh, to talk, talk me through what you've um what you've initiated on the in terms of cybersecurity in order to kind of keep up with that and, and obviously a lot more a lot more demands on organizations a lot more accountability for people like yourselves and indeed your your executives for cyber yeah i mean uh, so through the chatterang group uh, we had we had a, a group security audit um so now we're going through the process of making sure that we actually achieve where we need to be with that security we don't hold um, any financial information about customers, so um, and our and our data is all secure through our um, Salesforce um, architecture for customer details. But um, governance processes and so on, we're just now um, refining to make sure that we constantly adhere to um, the security standards of Tatarang and of of the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And so, what are, what are you seeing for the rest of twenty twenty three? What are what are some of the key kind of milestones that you've set for you and your team? What can we expect to be hearing from you? Yeah, well, we um, we as I said, we'll finalise the rollout of ship from store and click and collect um, in the next few weeks. Um, we've already embarked on our new planning systems, so we've gone through the selection process and we'll start implementation in the next six weeks. Uh, we're currently at the final um, stages of a new uh, PLM system, which is your product lifecycle management, where we go from designing a product right to the end um, production. So at the moment, that's done a lot on spreadsheets. So um, we need to have a proper system and workflow in place for approvals and so on. So we're in the final selection stages of that. Uh, we'll be rolling out our RFID project. And um, then we also have a store, a store management, performance management system that we have started implementing for rosters, for performance management, for dashboards, and time and attendance. So we're keeping ourselves very busy. You certainly are. Interesting times ahead. Well, we um, look forward to hearing more uh, about what Aaron Williams is doing with, um, with its digital projects this year. Peter Ratcliffe, Head of Technology with Aaron Williams, obviously massively iconic Australian fashion brand for any any uh, Australian and indeed probably a lot of uh, international executives seen um, have seen your, your boots around in airports and other, other places. So good luck with the rest of 2023 and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, David.